Since its founding in 2005, CETA has established itself as a leader in exploring interdisciplinary projects integrating novel approaches to the intersections of advanced computing, digital fabrication, material research, and interactive architecture. The extraordinary work of the research at CETA is well known among the Acadia community. Every year, we look forward to seeing their research featured in papers presented at Acadia. And this year is no exception. We have a number of papers and projects uh, from members of CETA. And I believe we'll see two more in the, in the morning presentations after, after this award. Receiving the award on behalf of CETA is Meta Ramsgard Thompson. Meta founded CETA in 2005, shortly after completing her PhD in architecture and computer science. Since then, Meta has led and grown the program, collecting a really amazing core group of researchers, fostering a broad network of industry and academic partnerships, managing the various academic programs, as well as the many events that bring the research community together, such as exhibitions, performances, conferences, and symposia. So with this, I will now invite Meta to come to the stage to receive the award and talk a little bit about the work of CETA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabby. <laughs> First of all, I, I want to thank you all very much um, for the prize. Uh, we're very proud to receive it and thankful for the recognition of our practice. The significance of these kinds of acknowledgments are very hard to measure, but it has real importance both for CETA as an agent of research and also as a group of people. We are very chuffed. Last year, we celebrated the first 10 years of CETA. And as part of this, we counted all the people that had moved through CETA over these 10 years. And we found out that it's 70 plus people have been part of our practice. This is a thanks to all of them. And the prize is a prize to all of us. I find this absolutely astounding. <laughs> I don't even think I know that many people, but uh, obviously I do. So I wanted to say a few words about our work um, and where it derives from and where it's going. CETA, the Center for IT and Architecture, is a research center that investigates the emergence of a new digital practice in architecture. Our remit is to query how computation challenges the way we think we design and we build architecture. Computation has largely been understood as an optimization tool, but there is so much more at stake. In CETA, computation is understood as a basic research question, advancing fundamental knowledge across the breadth of architectural practice. Explorative and open-ended, our research asks how computation challenges and not only the representational traditions or the communicative traditions of architecture, but also the structural and material thinking that underpin uh, building culture. Computation bestows design with a new mathematical depth by placing representation of simple, replacing simple rep, uh, representation of simple geometric extension with a new language of variable geometries controlled through Boolean logics of conditional statements and looping iteration, computation radically changes the foundations of design. The emergent practices um, of information modeling draw new boundaries between generative and the analytic, as well as between the drawn and the made. Programmable design tools actively engage with information, directly calibrating and calculating the impact of a given design decision. As such, the traditions of the design environment converge with new analytical practices in which the impact of design intent can be evaluated and tested. 
By learning from parallel fields of structural engineering, environmental engineering, material science, architectural design tools now hold the ability to model force and flow, to compute complex interscalar dependencies, and to interface these with intuitive design uh, environments. Simultaneously, at the other end of design practice, the interfacing of digital design tools with computer numeric controlled fabrication has led to a profound rethinking of the material practices of our world. In CETA, our work has cultivated an interest in material practice. Our research investigates many different material systems, including timber, textile, steel, and fiber composites. Working across a variated or a varied material field, we explore how computational design strategies can advance and invent new processes for known materials and employ known processes for ma new material um, strategies. This has led to a fundamental uh, interest in performative conception of materials by understanding materials not as static or inanimate, but as engaged by complex behaviors and performances, our aim is to expand structural and material thinking by creating new lightweight, flexible, and resilient structures. The interest in material performance is informed by two central uh, inquiries. On the one hand, working with digital fabrication and material design, uh, necessitates an understanding of the craft traditions that lay to ground for a particular material practice. How are materials created? What are the tools of their fabrication and the traditions for further detailing and assembly? On the other hand, design, uh, digital design allows us to formalize these performances into computational simulations. In, design, in CETA, we ask how simulations can be informed by fundamental crafts-based knowledge and how they can be interfaced with intuitive design environments that allow us to design for and with these performances. I'm a little bit ahead, I can see. <laughs> in these uh, uh, design paradigms, are no longer standardized to a measure of global uniformity, but instead locally tuned and optimized. This thinking links um, to interdisciplinary in, uh, efforts in broader fields of engineering and material science, are rethinking how we materialize our world. We're living in a time of extreme material inventiveness and are surrounded by highly engineered materials. The 20th century has brought with it an era of synthetic and engineered materials from artificial silk of nylon stockings to high modulus polymers, ceramic composites, and nanomaterials. This is the Ashby graph. Um, now, uh, architecture and building culture is entering this way of thinking. The link between design and, materi and direct ma uh, material manufacture and the ability to program advanced steering mechanisms ha has allowed architects to prototype material systems that grade in intensity or structure in response to design intent, optimizing material usage and employing inherent material performances. In CETA, we have explored these um, concepts in a series of projects spanning from textiles, 3D printing of variable materials, actuated materials, or as in composite territories where Paul and Martin examined the deployment of um, varying material thickness to engender the controlled bending of form thereby understanding new material practice which strategically conserve material intensity, but also invent new circular design concepts in which geometric descriptions necessarily include simulation and material descriptions by which performances can be calibrated and understood. Design loses its linearity from design to production, instead becoming inherently interdependent, demanding new models, new modeling logics by which behavior can be integrated, formalized, and actively designed. In architecture, the ability to use materials in smarter and less intense manner are fundamental building blocks for the conception of a lighter building culture, a culture in which lighter means less material, less transportation, and altogether lighter impact on our environment. In CETA, our focus over the last five years has been on modeling. 
In projects such as complex modeling and inner chain, we are exploring new modeling paradigms that extend beyond the existing paradigms of uh, 3D modeling parametric design, or BIM. As the building culture enters a rethinking of its material practices, we need to future-proof our representations. Rather than building common standards and libraries for known practices, we need to ask, what does a model need to be to, and develop fundamental infrastructures for yet unknown practices? This positions uh, fund this position fundamentally challenges some of the cornerstones of current, current modeling paradigms. Complex modeling explores interscalar relationships between design, the design at the material level and the design at the structural level, trying to invent new ways of constructing feedback between the two. Has that black square been there all the time? <laughs> anyway, black square is fine. Um, so. Um, in CETA, our interest lies especially with the integration of simulation into the early design phases by allowing simulation not only to be employed uh, by a uh, as a concluding evaluation uh, of an already mature design, but also as a tool for exploration and form finding. Simulation becomes part of a larger set of dynamic modeling tools for exploring and creating design possibilities. In these investigations, simulation is not seen in isolation, but rather as intrinsic, intrinsically correlated. Lightweight simulations are tested against um, solid FE simulations, allowing for continual feedback between early stage design and later stage refinement. Similarly, uh, simulations are not limited to material or structural simulation, but incorporated into larger frameworks of simulation, particular to each individual project. This practice of conceiving the information model as comprising multiple design integrated simulations only intensifies as we work in a multi-scalar design space. Here, uh, scale-specific simulations at the scale of the structure um, the element and the material are interfaced, passing information between individual model parts. As such, simulation is not singular, but instead recurrent and distributed across a landscape of a network model. Simulations introduce important concepts to design modeling. Occurring in time and through events, simulation necessitates time steps, thus making it, uh, us understand design as an incremental movement towards solution in difference to the explicit shaping of absolute form. This new temporality of our computational design space is exploded and discontinuous. Rather, discrete events can be called, occur in parallel, and enact in insulation, triggering new design decisions. The field of computational design is currently engaged in a push to build new models for understanding and capturing the emergent effects of high order parametric design. Here, new tools are being prototyped for understanding multi-objective parametric optimization, allowing architects to navigate design space along a Pareto front and giving feedback of the best trade-offs that were found so far, to quote Robert Berlinger. These new tools support existing concepts for understanding design as optioneering or versioning, as we have called it in the past, in which the singular design object is seen as part of a larger space of possibility. Here, um, um, however, they often entail a fundamental fixing of underlying topologies which, um, upon which variation is um, imposed. To retain the flexibility of this new design space, um, my slides a little bit off. Uh, uh, we need to embed uh, the possibility for change into this topology of the design model, open topologies in which the dependencies between parameters are emergent and open to change during the design process, allow inherent flexibility in the design by enabling activation of new parameters or neglecting obsolete uh, parameters. We need to build methods by which these can be steered and controlled so that we can move beyond random mutation into a more deliberate design uh, uh, paradigm. Um, in CETA's recent work, 
here. Uh, we've been exploring these concepts through dynamic modeling tools, including growth algorithms and machine learning tools. Growth algorithms introduce interesting ways of understanding the model as actively evolving during the design process. This firstly establishes a temporal dimension to the design model, but also allows us to think of topologies with changing body plans. In lace wall, topological thinking has furthermore led to an interest in graph modeling um, as a means to represent and manage the underlying interconnectivity of design parameters. In, and in new projects, we're exploring neural networks such as NEAT, uh, neuroevolution of augmenting uh, topologies, um, in which to create evolutionary processes that can change and optimize design topologies. These processes present alternative strategies to the embedded reductionism of parametric design. Here, um, uh, models exist in multiples, in thousands of models that are spawned by generative systems and then analyzed by learning systems. Models are no longer singular endpoints, but belong to processes of expansion, increasing in number, number and in complexity by each time step of evolution. The designer becomes part of a design cycle in which classification, querying and management of data sets become new design concepts. Where an initial interest in, in complex modeling lay with the abstraction of high dimensionality of complex um, solution spaces, the construction of methods by which to strategically steer these has become, uh, it has become clear that the challenge is not how to design in an n-dimensional um, space, but rather how to understand and capture interconnectivity or interdependence. In complex modeling, interdependence occurs at multiple levels, between material systems, between scales of material manipulation, between modes of representation, modes of analysis and simulation, and between explicit design strategies and those that are generative and optimized. As such, each model engenders their own distinct landscapes of, dis of network models, where concepts and tools are ported across projects. Each project finds their own particular way of orchestrating these into cohesive wholes. I hope what this shows you is a trajectory. It's a new departure. For us, when we made the book uh, two, three, four years ago, I think we started, took a very long time. It was like marking a line in the sand. We felt we had worked from material systems towards modeling. And every time we did projects, we saw that the digital model was always, we were always hacking solutions into it. By turning the question upside down and starting with the digital model, our practice from the outside doesn't look very different. We still build demonstrators, we still investigate material systems, but I think this sort of inverse look, an inverse perception is allowing us to scratch much deeper at the fundamental tools of architecture, which do remain representation in the end. Thank you very much.